If anyone didn't know before, they know now. What beats deep in the hearts of the American people is this, democracy. The right to be heard, to have your vote counted, to choose leaders of this nation, to govern ourselves. In America, politicians don't take power. People grant power to them. The flame of democracy was lit in this nation a long time ago. And we now know nothing, not even a pandemic or an abuse of power, can extinguish that flame. The Electoral College votes which occurred today reflect the fact that even in the face of a public health crisis, unlike anything we've experienced in our lifetimes, the people voted. They voted in record numbers. More Americans voted this year than have ever voted in the history of the United States of America. Over 155 million Americans were determined to have their voices heard and their votes counted. <clears throat> a number so big that this election now ranks as the clearest demonstration of the true will of the American people. 81 million of those votes were cast for me and Vice President-elect Harris. That, too, is a record. More than any ticket has received in the history of America. It represents a winning margin of more than 7 million votes over the number of votes cast for my opponent. Together, the <clears throat> Vice President-elect Harris and I earned 306 electoral votes, well exceeding the 270 electoral votes needed to secure victory. 306 electoral votes is the same number of electoral votes that Donald Trump and Vice President Pence received when they won in 2016. President Trump called his elect the Electoral College tally a landslide. By his own standards, these numbers represented a clear victory then, and I respectfully suggest they do so now. It is my sincere hope we never again see anyone subjected to the kind of threats and abuse we saw in this election. It's simply unconscionable. We owe these public servants a debt of gratitude. They didn't seek the spotlight. You know, and our democracy survived because of them. In America, when questions are raised about the legitimacy of any election, those questions are resolved through the legal processes. And that's precisely what happened here. The Trump campaign brought, brought dozens and dozens and dozens of legal challenges to test the result. They were heard again and again. And each of the times they were heard, they were found to be without merit. Time and again, President Trump's lawyers presented arguments to state officials, state legislatures, state and federal courts, and ultimately to the United States Supreme Court twice. They were heard by more than 80 judges across this country, and in every case, no cause or evidence was found to reverse or question or dispute <clears throat> the results. A few states went for recounts. All the counts were confirmed. The results in Georgia were counted three times. Didn't change the outcome. The recount conducted in Wisconsin actually saw our margin grow. The margin we had in Michigan was 14 times the margin President Trump won that state by four years ago. Our margin in Pennsylvania was nearly twice the size of the Trump margin four years ago. <clears throat> and yet, none of this has stopped baseless claims about the legitimacy of the results. Even more stunning, 17 Republican attorneys general and 126 Republican members of the, members of the Congress Actually, they actually signed on to a lawsuit filed by the state of Texas. That lawsuit asked the United States Supreme Court to reject the certified vote counts in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. 
This legal maneuver was an effort by elected officials and one group of states to try to get the Supreme Court to wipe out the votes of more than 20 million Americans in other states and to hand the presidency to a candidate who lost the Electoral College, lost the popular vote, and lost each and every one of the states whose votes they were trying to reverse. President Trump was denied no course of action he wanted to take. He took his case to Republican governors and Republican Secretary of State as he criticized many of them, to Republican state legislatures, to Republican-appointed judges at every level. And in a case decided after the Supreme Court's latest rejection, a judge appointed by President Trump wrote, wrote, quote, this court has allowed the plaintiff the chance to make his case, and he has lost on the merits, end of quote, lost on the merits. Four years ago, when I was a sitting vice president of the United States, it was my responsibility to announce the tally of the Electoral College votes in the joint session of Congress that voted to elect Donald Trump. I did my job. And I'm pleased, but not surprised, by the number of my former Republican colleagues in the Senate who have acknowledged already the results of the Electoral College. I thank them, and I'm convinced we can work together for the good of the nation on many subjects. We, the people, voted. <clears throat> Faith in our institutions held. The integrity of our elections remains intact. And now it's time to turn the page, as we've done throughout our history, to unite, <clears throat> to heal. As I said in this campaign, I will be president for all Americans. <clears throat> I'll work just as hard for those of you who didn't vote for me as I will for those who did. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.